and welcome to Mike Ferry TV. You know, we're, we're at a very interesting time of the year as we're ending November going into December and, of course, 2015. And, and this is the time of year where, of course, a lot of really inspiring, great things happen to an individual like yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally, and you, you get excited about what's going to happen next, and you get excited about your plans for 2015. At the same time, and very normal, that there's a lot of fears involved, uh, anticipation, anxiety, because, you know, what am I going to do, and is it going to get better, and what's going to happen to the market, and I guess all the normal things that a person experiences. And what I want to look at uh, today and next week is say, okay, let's, let's try to Let's try to relax, calm down, and let's try to make sure that as we look at 2015, and most importantly, the end of this year, because we still have plenty of time to produce, that we do it without the anxiety, but also without too much hype and excitement, because we have to be realistic as to who we are, what we've done, how we do it, what we have to need to, to know, and what we have to do next to, to grow. So I'm going to ask you to write down three words as we start today. And these words will help us take a look very carefully at who we are today, what we can do in the next few weeks to finish strong, and all of 2015. Uh, the first word is the word attitude, of course. Now, it's an overused word, the word attitude. It's, it's talked about it probably too much, and I, and I want to spend a lot of time on it, but what I want you to think about is this. What is the attitude you have, plus or minus, positive or negative, towards yourself, the business you're in, the growth of the business, what you can accomplish, and setting goals for 2015. See, if you don't have a positive attitude that I'm going to do something great, I'm going to do something strong, I'm going to grow, I'm going to develop, I'm going to learn, if you don't have that attitude, then it's real hard then to move forward and to do anything more than you've done so far. The majority of all real estate people, and we, we both know this, rely almost 100% on the market, on the economy in their area to carry them through either good or bad in terms of production. We can't have that take place with a person like yourself. You have to develop the attitude that you're the person in charge of the economy, because you are. You're the person in charge of the, of the promotion of yourself. You're the person in charge of the production of yourself. It's all about you. It's not about anybody else, because the truth is, if you're doing your job every day to the degree you should, and if you're doing your job every day the way you know you can, and you're willing to learn, and willing to accept, and willing to grow, then the attitude you have is going to really help you in 2015. Second word I wrote down, of course, is the word approach. As we look at the end of this year in 2015, you know, how do, how do you approach what you're doing? Are you looking at 2015 with a smile on your face and some excitement, anticipation, as we said before? Are you looking at 2015 as a method of saying, this is a chance for me to do something extraordinary with my life and my business? Because the truth is, it is. If we've been working together for long on Mike Ferry TV, or if you're involved in our seminars, using our materials, our coaching, you know that if you lay out a good foundation, if you build a strong foundation, if you have the skill set and the mindset to become productive, your approach is to be very strong as you approach this new year. Approach, how you say things, what you say, how you look, the smile on your face, the attitude you have, the obvious enthusiasm you have, the energy that you exhibit. This is all about the approach. See, why do you not approach most people? Because you don't know what to say. Why do the people that approach people succeed? They know what to say. So we look at the word attitude, we look at the word approach, and then of course we look at the word expectations. What expectations do you have for 2015? What expectations do you have for the end of 2014? Are you looking at the rest of this year as being a real chance to, to hone your skills and to get your attitude in shape, to work on your mindset, to really do something to build into 2015? It's all about expectations. See, I start every seminar, every retreat, every workshop. If we have 1,000 people in the room, my expectation is, 1,000 people are going to do 100% of what I say. And it takes four days for them to convince me that only a small percentage are going to, but I'm going to have the expectation that everybody's going to use it, everybody's going to succeed and do better because of the seminar. I have high expectations for myself. I have high expectations for you. Do you see yourself doing something extraordinary? Now, with that being said, the catch to everything we do in life, again, it's an overword used, overused word, I should say, is the word motivation. Because it all comes down to self-motivation. Are you motivated to go out and do something great as we finish this year? 
Are you motivated to go out and do something great in 2015? Or the counter of that is complacency. Are you letting complacency run your life? Satisfied with what you have. Satisfied with the status quo. No chance for growth. No chance for doing better. You know, I do a few deals. I lose a few deals. I make a little bit of money. I'm okay. Or, hey, listen, I'm going to go do something great in 2015. It comes down to motivation. What is the motivation? Motivation. Motive to action. What drives you? What gets you excited? Okay, well, is there a burning desire that you have to accomplish something, to do anything in 2015 different than you did in 2014. So let's play a little game. We've done this time and time again over the years together on Mike Ferry TV. I'm going to ask you to do it again now because it's a great way to focus on what we're going to do for the next 13 months, ending this year and all of next year. I want you to write down and just and, and be honest. It's not going to be perfect. And you don't have to tell anybody else, but I want you to write down what does it cost you and your family to live per month? What is, what is your cost of living? This has a lot to do with motivation, has a lot to do with productivity. What does it cost you a month to live? Let's say that you write down it costs $4,000 a month to live. House payment, car payment, insurance, kids, etc. $4,000. And then I'm going to ask you to write down below that letter B, what outside income do you have? Does your spouse work? Do you have some rental income? Do you have some investments that are paying off a little bit of money each month? You know, do you have some alimony and child support coming in? What is your outside income? And let's just say, for example, that your outside income is $4,000 a month. That's what your spouse earns. Well, if I look at letter C, the difference between your outside income and your cost of living, the answer is zero. Well, what is your motivation when the answer is zero? If you never sell a home, you're comfortable. What I look for in agents are those that have 4000 in expense and 2000 in outside income, and they have to, let her see, go earn some money. See, do you have to go out and earn money? Do you have to go out and perform? Do you have to go out and produce? And if so, how much production do you have to provide for your family to live the life they want? See, if you look at this simple exercise, and then if you say to yourself, okay, how much additional money would you like to have? How much more would you like to earn? How much more can you put in the bank? Whether that be an investment or a savings or retirement or just a better lifestyle. So how much better do you want your lifestyle to be? So let's, let's, let's take the example. It costs you 4,000 a month to live. You have 2,000 outside income. You need to earn 2,000 a month. Your average commission check is 4,000 and you want to maintain your lifestyle. How many deals do you have to do in 2015? It sounds like not very many. So what I want you to think about is, is there something driving you? Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to take and find a better home to live in? Do you want a new car for yourself or your family? Do you want to take a great vacation next year? Do you want to have a savings account set aside? You know, do you want to create some investments? You got to find something that gets you excited about doing your job every day. You know, I had a great conversation a couple of days ago with a friend of mine down here in Naples. And he had mentioned, he said, I heard you worked at one time with Earl Nightingale. And I said, I, I worked for Earl Nightingale for four years in Chicago. And he said, what was that like? And I said, well, that, that's a question that could take days to answer. But I will say one thing about working with Earl Nightingale. He was highly driven to succeed. Because remember, Earl Nightingale's definition of success was the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal or objective. But Earl said all the time that 95% of the American people don't have a worthwhile goal or objective. They're just trying to get by. They're just trying to live day to day. They just want to make sure they can pay their bills at the end of the month, you know, and have a few pennies left over. Is that what you want out of 2015? Is that as good as it gets? Is that the attitude you have, the approach and expectations? See, are you, are you counting on the fact the economy may get a little bit better so you can get an extra sale or two? Or do you want to accomplish something? So why don't you take a piece of paper and just write down 2015, I would like to accomplish blank and fill it in. I mean, use your wildest imagination, your wildest dreams. What are some of the things you'd like to accomplish, do, and have in 2015? Because see, this is all about the word motivation. Motivation, motive to action, taking some actions. But Mike, I'm scared, I'm worried, I don't know about the economy and my skills aren't very good. Yeah, but those are things that you can change very fast. Who cares about the economy? Good or bad, there's gonna be a lot of homes sold in 2015. Good or bad, certain agents are gonna do well. 
We want you to be one of them. Think about your attitude. Think about the approach. Think about the expectations. Think about the goals you have. Specifically, what would you like to accomplish? What would you like to do? What would you like to have? Write them down. Keep them in front of you all the time. Look at that cost of living. Look at what you're bringing in. Look at the additional money you'd like to earn and then figure out a simple plan to make that happen. We know one thing. It's going to happen to a lot of people. Why not have it happen to you? Remember, that choice for 2015 is nobody else's. That choice is yours. The greatest power human beings have is the power of choice. Take advantage of the power of choice today and you're going to make next year the best year of your life. As we progress over the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at some of the things you can do to make next year the best year of your life. Talk to you next week.